wouldn't have believed it. Never would have believed it. Hey, what's up everyone? Matt here. So, uh, we're heading out on a bit of an adventure this morning. We're, uh, we're gonna go work on an old snowmobile that I picked up, uh, probably about a year ago. Um, it's a 1968 Bombardier. Alpine. What type of Alpine, you might ask? A Super Alpine. What makes it so super, you might ask? The fact that it has the 370cc opposed twin cylinder Rotax engine in it. Um, that's what the Super Alpine was. You know, you had the regular Alpine with the single cylinder, uh, and you had the Super Alpine that had the two cylinder Rotax engine. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait. Got the truck all loaded up with some parts and some tools. Never had this machine running. Apparently it runs. When I bought it, the guy said uh, the guy said that it ran. It kind of started, you know, he started it up for me, but it was in the middle of summer. So, uh, so that's it. We'll check and see. But, you know, I got a bunch of parts with me, and uh, we'll try to get it going and have a bit of fun. There's not too much snow, but, uh, you know, I just want to give it a bit of a test in case we do end up getting some snow eventually. So, uh, so hang in there. Where's that Alpine? No, 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 no. Uh, 68 Alpine. Let's get it outside, get some light on it to work on it a bit better. All right, so here we are, folks. We got it outside. Got a little bit of, got a bit of outdoor light so we can see properly with the camera and everything. But, uh, but that's it. So not in the best of shapes, but that's exactly what I wanted when I bought it. Because when you buy a beautiful sled that's either been restored or even worse, an original Survivor, you're always scared about damaging it and using it too much. So this guy is in good, usable condition as per my standards. And uh, like I said, 1968 Super Alpine. Um, you know, big difference between a regular Alpine was, like I said, the 370 Rotax twin cylinder engine. Now, Bombardier in 67 produced these engines uh, for the first time. It would have been the first production twin cylinder engine. They had them in a couple Olympics, a couple being about 125 of them, and the Super Alpines. This is the 68, a lot less rare than the 67s, but uh, the big difference between any other uh, Alpine model is it had the dual headlights. And don't quote me on this, but I would assume that other than stuff like Elites, I don't think Bombardier ever made any other dual headlight production models. They always, you know, even in 69, they still had the Super Alpine with the 370, but it came back to one headlight. So I guess from Bombardier's standpoint, uh, two is not always better than one. So, yeah. All right, so here's the game plan, folks. Um... When I went to go pick this sled up, like I said, it started, it ran, it'll probably start right now. And I know that a lot of you guys are gonna be like, try to get it started, but I don't have a lot of time and I don't like just getting something out. My goal isn't just to start it. My goal is to have a reliable running sled. So we're gonna just do some standard routine maintenance. You know, check the gas lines, probably change them. Check the spark plugs, probably change them. Check the carb. Maybe open it up. I got a new carb kit for it. You know, I showed up with a bunch of different stuff. We'll check the electrical system, make sure that uh, that we got spark on both cylinders, and uh, and then grease it, put new gas in it, and then we'll try starting it. Let's get the odds on our side here, folks. So uh, so that's the plan. I'll get you up on a tripod, and uh, we'll start taking a look at that engine. All right. So we just got the uh, the hood off, and. Uh, yeah, the good news is, you know, uh, this sled was purchased from a gentleman that bought it off the original owner. And he owned it for 12 years, and he said that he ran it every single year. He didn't run it a lot, you know, maybe 7 to 10 hours. But, uh, you know, you could see that this sled has had a certain amount of maintenance to it. You know, in terms of originality and stuff, not that great. But in terms of, you know, this guy has potential, I, I am not that familiar with Alpines. I'm not sure, I would highly doubt that that's the original fuel tank, um, but you know what, I'm happy that it's not like a metal tank, and like I said, I have no idea whether or not 
Alpines had metal tanks in 68 or not. I know the Olympics did, but uh, another added bonus, I mean, I just ordered a brand new belt for it. It's got a brand new, or at least what looks to be a pretty new Kimpex Pro Series belt. I mean, maybe not the best of belts, but you know, at 18 horsepower, I don't think we're gonna tear it up. Uh, you know, you look at the electrical system, you know, the connections, the terminals, things have been kind of changed around. This is what he used to uh, to do his kind of quick connect for the wiring harness for the lights. Lights, by the way, are LED lights. They're not the originals. This should have a kind of like a polycarbonate cover, which it doesn't have. Um, and it has, it doesn't have the original seal beams. It has these LED lights that flicker because, you know, we're looking at modern day electronics with mid 60s magneto driven electricity so uh they don't like that too much probably have to get a voltage regulator or something this is uh this is his little fuel fuel cap guard here try not to get too much snow into the hood other than that you know hood's not in the best of shapes but you know from 20 feet away this sled's gonna look absolutely beautiful muffler um you know whether or not this is the original muffler or not like i said i I really don't know too much about the Alpine models in terms of what's original and what's not. All I know is we're going to get this guy running. Um, this is what they call the, uh, I forget what they call it, power, power link steering or something. This was new to 68 as well. Give you a little bit more of a mechanical advantage. You see it's got a bit of a, a, bit of a lever system and a, and a ball so we can wiggle that ski around a little better. And that's it. So let's get those plugs out, take a look at the plugs, and, uh, and we'll go from there. All right, so I guess we'll start by getting this air box off. Give us a little bit of room to, to work. Got some loose fasteners. I'm not sure how it's held on at the bottom, but uh, this is the first time I've worked on an opposed twin cylinder engine, so pardon me if I don't seem at ease with what I'm doing. Check and see, and then this guy. All right, that guy's off. Cool. All right, get this guy here. Choke. I don't know if that just pulls off or what. All right, let's see. I'm gonna try not to damage this hair box. Might be the most valuable part on this sled. Well, there's quite a bit of sludge kind of all over the place, so. Did I just figure out the trick? Or am I just wasting my time? All right, maybe that's the trick. There we go. All right, cool, we did it. We did it, folks. Get this guy out of the way. Get this guy off here. Come on. And there we go, and someone already cut the little notch for the quick disconnect modification. And this bowl here. Uh, looks like it's held in by these long studs. All right, we'll leave that on there for now. All right, so we're gonna check these plugs out here. And uh, I like what I see, brand new NGKs. So again, this thing, this thing should be a runner. Just get it out for, let's see how they're doing. Oh, almost brand spanking new. You see that? These are uh, 
B8 HSs, which uh, I know are the right plugs because I brought another set of them. Uh, I got a set of Bosch ones um, coming in, but uh, you know, I'm curious to know whether or not, you know, I always, I always buy NGKs, but uh, you know, Bosch, Bosch obviously were probably the best and uh, Champion, you know, I, I don't, I don't really mind Champion. I mean, I put Champion in some of my motors, but uh, when I got to the store, I noticed that the NGKs were made in Japan and the Champions were made in Mexico. So I just kind of figured I'd rather buy something made in Japan than Mexico. So I'm not sure if you see that, but again, the proper plug still looks real nice. There's a little bit more, it looks like the, uh, this cylinder here, the outwards one might be running a little bit lean, but, uh, Overall, it's not too bad, so let's crank it over. And it's sucking up gas and everything, so you know what? I might go, oh boy, okay, well. <laughs> I got a, uh, all right, this coil, all right, we got a little something fishy going along with this coil over here. Might do something there, but uh, this carb, I might not take the carbon part right away because I see it just, I'm just pulling this guy over and it's its chugging up gas like you wouldn't believe. So uh, so that's kind of good. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna put these plugs back in um, and we're gonna change the, are we gonna change the spark plug wires? I don't know. Cause if you look, I don't know if you can see this here. Let's get the other camera in. I'm not sure if you can see this, but I just kind of yanked on this guy here and came right out, you know, and that's that's not the best. It still has its pin. And uh, then I noticed that there's some silicone on this terminal here, kind of loose. I mean, but you know, it's there. I think he just put the silicone on to, the silicone on to seal it, which is fine. There's a little bit on this one here too. But this guy's in there. Uh, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna try to do the minimum amount of work. Uh, you know, no, that's not that's not what the intention of the original video was, but uh, let's just snip this tip off, try to screw it back in. You know, we'll get it off here, we'll be able to turn it, and uh, we're gonna get these plugs back in, and uh, you know what, screw it, let's just try to start it. And he's crapping this fuel bowl. No, not so much, not the fuel line's hard, but it's all still there, and like I said, check this out. Check it out, folks. I'm just turning it over from those spark plugs, and I don't know if you can see, but there's gas. This thing's sucking up gas there. You see? see that gas kind of moving around, like right here? Well, that means that we got we got life. We got life in that diaphragm. So uh, so that's looking good. So let's uh, let's get those plugs back in. Get the air box. Do we need the air box? No, no R box for the testing, and uh, yeah, we'll try to we'll try to get it going. Let's check it. Let's check it for spark. See if we can get any spark out of it. We'll assume that the key switch works. So, I'll give it a little check here. Now this is the bad, this is the bad coil, the bad wire. We'll just put it in, and we'll check and see if we got any spark out of it. Oh yeah, I didn't see any spark on that one. How about this one? Let's try to position it a little bit better. Oh yeah, all right, we're good. We're in business, baby. So let's get both these plugs back in.
we're not going to put the cap on this one just yet because we're going to change. Now we're going to cut this wire and we're just going to thread it back in because I kind of see that as a, as a minor issue in the waiting. Get this back guy back in here. That looks good. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to, uh, to trying this guy out. I never rode a, a 370 before, so we'll give it a little try if it runs. Good. So this guy was good. So we'll just we'll just kind of put it put it back on, which is fine. And then this fellow right over here, we're just gonna snip the tip. And then uh, I need a flathead screwdriver. Okay. Can we move it out? Yeah. Just like that, and then we'll. I'm sure you guys all already know this, but uh, you know those coils. You basically just they have this little threaded stud in them, and uh, the spark plug wire just twists on. And uh, when it gets too loose or whatnot, it can it can pull out. So uh, you know we could just start over. There would be a be a bit of damage maybe in here. I mean, so we'll just cut oh, about half an inch off. And now we have a nice fresh piece of copper. And then you just push down and you thread it on like so. And maybe we can get away with it. Maybe we can save ourselves. Now that's also something you might want to check if ever your sled kind of stalls and is either running on one cylinder, if it's a single cylinder, and has coils like this. Um, see, you pull on it a bit and it stays in. So, you know, those things can kind of break or come out over time and, uh, and cause you some grief. So, oh, and you see just by manipulating it, it's the same principle on these spark plug uh, boots. So, same thing happened here. This guy has the um, the small hole. Basically, you have to unscrew that a little lug on the spark plug. Again, the cap still looks okay, so we'll do the same technique. We'll just clip off the tip. And get this guy on there. You know, try to get it. You can see how it's not the most effective way of holding a, uh, a wire to a connection, but uh, that's what we got. Pro tip number 3900, um, you can take a little scribe or a little poker and just give yourself a bit of a chance. Make yourself a little pilot hole for your, for your screw. And you just try to get it in centered and then screw it on. And you have to put a downwards pressure because you basically have to thread your way into the copper wire. This guy's not cooperating too much. Once it gets started, but like I said, it's not the easiest thing to do. Ugh. Yeah. Try to get that hole a little bigger. Take four. Just kidding, it's probably only take three. I'm not that bad. Ugh. Being a bit of a being a bit of a hassle today. Try to be nice. Are you guys in scene? I hope so. I think we got it. I'm running out of thumb strength here. All right. Woo! 
did it. Now, if we're lucky, we still have enough. There we go. It's not the tightest fit, but for right now, we'll get this guy started like that. Oops. Great. All right, I think we're ready to, to give it a try. Like I said, this air box will just sort of, we'll just sort of get it out of our way. Just leave it on like this. Let's give the old gas a sniff, just like back in high school. Oof, not the best. Um, yeah, not the best indeed. I got some fresh gas, and I'd almost want to get rid of this gas. Let's uh, let's try to siphon out the tank. Let's get rid of this old gas, and uh, and then we'll grease it up a bit, and we'll see if we can get it started. All right, hang in there, folks. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna. Um, we're gonna siphon out this old gas, and uh, you know, like you all already know, you know, the secret to siphoning is uh, having whatever your receptacle is. It has to be below the level of fuel. So if I tried to siphon into something that was higher, wouldn't work. You know, here the level's right about here, and we'll have it falling into the bottle right down here. You need some trusty hose, and then you need your lips and a bit of suction. And this is probably one of the most boring parts of doing small engine mechanics, getting a mouth full of gasoline. And old gas is even worse. down into the bottom there's barely any gas in it so we'll see if we can you know what we'll tape a tape a stick on here all right so we're going to use this little trick here to get the bottom of the tank fully siphoned, you need something rigid to hold it down at the bottom. So I'm just gonna use a screwdriver, tape it on, and that way there I can hold my tube right at the bottom, just like that. There we go. It's gonna work, maybe. Got it all over my beard. <laughs> Ugh. Girlfriend's gonna like that. Now we just gotta be patient. While I'm waiting on this guy to fill up, get a bit of white lithium grease in on the uh, on the various areas that I believe require some. Just help it out. Put all the chances on our side. There we go. Don't forget to lube up the belt. And your brake. <laughs> All right, that's all the storage capacity that I have, so that's gonna be enough. Whatever left, whatever's left in there is gonna have to get, is gonna have to get burned. All right, the uh, gas is all siphoned out. We'll get some fresh stuff in.
more than enough. So I put in 50 to 1, but uh, I'll add a little bit more oil just to be friendly with this old guy. You know if these old sleds run 50 to 1 or you put 40 to 1, 30 to 1? 41? Yeah. Looks like 41 to me, folks. Hey? Yeah. The moment of truth. No. Yikes. Gotta try to keep this choke closed. Is it? Yeah. Just throw a bit in there. Okay, okay, okay. Put a bit more. As I took off from over there, uh, my uncle was actually in the garage trying to start up his Nordic and uh, he saw the, the rear light pop off and fire and uh, that's it. These LED lights, like I kind of said, the guy put LED lights on this thing and uh, no voltage regulator so we got a whole lot of fried components. I don't know what the heck kind of voltage <laughs> this guy sent out but uh, I think I'm going to cut the wire going to the back. I don't want to... You know, I don't mind blowing the, uh, blowing that crappy little light off, but we're not going to be hooking back up the 
the front lights. We'll get the cab back on it and uh, yeah, it runs well, it runs pretty well. Not very fast, you know, not to be expected from a machine like this, but uh, yeah, let's go, uh, let's go take it on the field and have a bit of fun. Nordic. It's 72, eh? I better get her up. You want to hold it? You don't usually say this, but uh, I don't find the snowmobile smoking enough, making enough smell. So I'm gonna put a bit more oil into the gas tank. Hey, eh? homemade, eh? homemade. It's not smoking, eh? Yeah. We'll put a bit more oil in it. How much you got in there? 40 more? I don't think it's 40 30, more. 25. That's it. 25 is pretty good. Yeah. Oh, just gonna see the side of the Yeah, that's it. Now it's smoking. Now it's smoking. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's like a workhorse. You know what? But what bothers me is that it's full pin, and it's not. It's not revving. It's not revving. I don't know. And it's. However, we'll see. Yeah, 
Yeah, it turns once, no? Oh, someone came to life. So now it's running? You have to get it, uh, yeah. just unclog it there, rev it up a bit. So this is 72, 640 Nordic. In wonderful condition. Dirty though. Dirty. Yeah. Old meets older. Faster than the 370 or? Well, folks, we uh, we parked the Super Alpine back in, and uh, I'm glad we got it running. It's a little wrap up of what happened. Um, you know, when I thought that it didn't have enough oil, and I added more in, I actually added probably way too much in. I have a hunch I'm at like 25 to one or or more, and uh, started fouling plugs. I was playing with the jet, seeing if it could run, but it wasn't running. All that great so you know next step's gonna be to get you know maybe try to dilute the gas a bit check the plugs probably follow the plugs i want to open up the carb clean it out you know just just give it the tune-up that it should have gotten today but overall i'm real happy with what we did i'm real happy with you know trying out my first 370 experience and uh, there's definitely going to be more videos of you know working on it and getting it back up to you know better you know better mechanical condition it's never going to be a trailer queen or any kind of show prize winning sled but uh you know for my utility making cross country ski trails uh it's going to be just perfect so i hope you enjoyed the uh the video and uh see you next time signing out